Okay, um, so this one is number 22 on exam 1. And the question is, what is the mass of O2 gas consumed in the combustion of 21.5 grams of cyclohexane to form carbon dioxide and H2O? A lot of you guys are going to ask, okay, well, can we get a question like this with cyclohexane? Have we ever seen this before? Well, break it down. The only part you might not be familiar with is the cyclo part, okay? Uh, on codacademy.com, they have a couple websites, uh, a couple videos under um, organic chemistry, actually, that'll help you with this, okay? Naming organic compounds. But a cyclo means that these are all in a ring. Okay, uh, kind of like benzene, but I'm, I'm going to point out differences between this and benzene, even though they both have six carbons. Uh, so anyway, I have cyclohexane. Ane means I have an alkane, which means I only have single bonds. Hex, hexane means I have six carbons. And cyclo means they're all arranged in a circle. So before we, we tackle this problem, well, let's take a look at this. So this over here is benzene. Actually, I forgot to write in all these little... Um, bonds here. I just want you to imagine that there's a hydrogen attached to each carbon. Okay, I didn't want to draw them all because as you can see here, I, I, I hated my life after drawing the, the cyclohexane. Anyway, the difference between something like a cyclohexane and a benzene, even though they have six carbons each, is that this hexane will have two resonance structures with this double bond, this pi bond, kind of going, you know, and 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 resonating and, and kind of spinning around. Okay, so you're gonna have 1.5 bonds on each one of these because you know half the time it's gonna be a double bond, the other half it's gonna be one. So you take that and you can work it out as 1.5. Okay, so anyway, this is cyclohexane. Okay, if you wanted to draw it out, okay, if you knew what cyclohexane was, you could draw it out. You could fill in all the rest with your hydrogen, so you have two hydrogens per carbon, I find it easier in this case to just say, okay, well, I have six carbons, then I'm going to have 12 hydrogens. I'm sure you can see why I wouldn't want to draw this out. Okay, imagine if this was like cyclo no name. That, that, this would be a nightmare for me, okay? So anyway, a combustion reaction, okay, this is the first thing you should see. And you should see it as C6H12 plus oxygen, okay? Uh, it turns into CO2 plus H2. I should have also, you know, this should say, you know, this is this particular one is, I guess, is a gas, and this is gas and gas and liquid. I'm just saying that anyway. But but I didn't put that in. Uh, sorry about that, guys. Uh, but later on, please please put that in. All right. So anyway, um, I need to I need to balance this, don't I? Okay, because I have I have two oxygens here. I have three here. So it's actually C6H12 plus 9O2 uh, is equal to, or turns into, sorry, uh, 6CO2 plus 6H2O, okay? Uh, I hope. All right. Um, so yeah, that, that's my balanced equation. From here, I can, I can come up with a couple molar relationships, okay? I can make molar ratios, because if I have one C6H12, I know I have nine oxygens, okay? Now, I know we're asking for the oxygen consumed here, and you might be asking, well, why the hell do we need to find out about the carbon dioxide in the water? Well, the truth is, in order to get the correct number of oxygens, you need to balance out your carbon dioxide in your water as well, okay? So if I know I have one C6, you know, if I have one uh, cyclohexane, I know I have nine O2, okay? So so this is the ratio I set that as, but let's let's work this step by step. It, the problem tells me I have 21.5 grams of cyclohexane, okay? First thing, all right, my answer should have three sig figs, okay? So not, not a huge problem on a multiple choice test, but just know that, okay? Three sig figs here. So I'm going to multiply that by one mole. I'm going to multiply that by the molar mass. This is actually conversion. Okay, if you think about it, this is all just dimensional analysis. So 21.5 grams, I need to find out how many moles of cyclohexane I have. So I do that by dividing it by the molar mass of cyclohexane. So that's 6 times 12.01 plus 12 times 1.008. That'll give me this. Okay, so now at this point, if I were to stop here, I would have the total number of cyclohexanes. Okay, but I don't want that. I want to find out how many O2s I have, right? Because that's the question. So what I'm going to do then is I'm going to set another. I'm going to set my ratio. So I have one mole of C6H12. That's my cyclohexane, and, and I'm going to have my nine O2s on top. This is actually nine moles. Sorry, I, I didn't write that incorrectly. Uh, I want to put this on the bottom so this will cancel out. Okay, so in the end, I'll have nine O2, nine moles of O2. Okay, so then I'll find out how many moles of, of oxygen I actually have total in all of this. I can multiply that by 32. Okay, the other thing you can do is you can then do over here. You could say like one mole of O2 has two moles of oxygen. Multiply it by by 16 grams instead. That works also. But for me, you know, just for the sake of I didn't want to run out of paper. 
I just did 32 grams over one mole of O2. When you work this whole thing across, keep in mind you, hit, you start with grams of cyclohexane, you get moles of cyclohexane, moles of oxygen times oxygen gas, sorry, uh, because this is a homonuclear um, like, uh, uh, molecule. But anyway, uh, you'll get moles of O2 gas. Multiply that by the amount of grams you have in one mole of O2 gas, and you'll have 73.6 grams.